Hello everyone, my name is Jenny Karai and for many years I've been the only out lesbian in Albania. Hello, my name is Oliver and I'm a trans guy who makes videos about LGBTQIA plus people where they get to talk about anything that they want that somehow relates to them being queer. In late June I spent a week in Albania and while visiting Tirana I was invited to Alianza LGBT's community centre and I got to sit down and speak with one of their founding members. My name is uh, Jenny Karai. I've been an LGBTI activist for 14 years now in Albania. I started when I was little, I would say. Nothing was happening in the country in those years, it was 2009. We started as an informal group, mostly lesbians in the beginning, like four or five people. And we started organizing actions in the streets during the night, because in those years you could not go out during the day and put posters or distribute brochures or do graffiti during the day. So we would uh, wait for 12 o'clock to come <laughs> and go out in the streets and put the posters and do graffitis with LGBT colors, rainbow colors and leave messages for the rest of our community just to understand that look there is a group organizing here and doing stuff so you are not alone. And those were very uh, difficult years in Albania because during that period most of society thought that being LGBT was a sickness that there were not gay people in the country, that this was a Western phenomena, that you would get this kind of sickness if you would travel in the West and come back in the country, or if people from the West would come in the country and infect you with this disease. So the general perception was not positive. There were a lot of stereotypes and people as well didn't thought that we existed. Growing up as queer in this environment was lonely. When I was a teenager, even though I knew from an early age that uh, I, I'm a lesbian, most of my teenagehood I thought I was the only lesbian, you know, and I didn't know any other people from the community. The first time I talked with other people from the community was, you know, through an online portal where you would meet people and that was it. So the feeling of isolation and the feeling of loneliness and the feeling of feeling different and uh, not understood was very big for my generation at least because now things have, have started to change a lot. Shani has a pretty unique story of how she accidentally came out as lesbian to the whole country in 2012. We were organizing the first gay pride in Albania in this year and when we made it public that we were gonna organize the pride we were contacted by a journalist saying that uh, they wanted the um, opinion that is like the biggest political TV show in Albania that has a lot of viewers wanted to organize a show with this thematic like the organizing of Tirana Pride. The format of the debate is with a panel of people pro and against. So in the panel against the organizing of Pride was a priest, a Muslim woman and conservative politician. My family knew about me and, and that I was doing activism, but when they found out we had this agreement that I would not go on TV publicly, I would do activism underground. When the show happened, I was going there to support a colleague of mine that was in the panel, so I was not gonna talk. But when the debate started, it was very aggressive, very ugly. And then all the time they were saying, okay, they are going to organize the Pride, but where are they? You know, where is the community? We don't see any face, we don't see anyone that is out. Who's going to walk in this parade, you know? In that moment, I told to the journalist, like, give me the microphone. As I was in the audience, the cameras were, you know, in the, in the show, so they all turned back. I panicked a little because I was not used to the cameras and like being uh, in the tension. I remember just one moment getting the microphone and saying that, uh, you know, people like me uh, live in fear and isolation and don't come out because of people like you, I was telling to this politician. At that moment, the show was live, so I started to receive like a lot of messages from my friends 
and a lot of message from my father saying like oh my god what did you just do you destroyed your life you know and the journalist that you know tells me oh we have a lesbian in the audience what's your name how old are you and it was like that was like a life-changing event because from that day on like most of people in the country knew you know about me and I remember the next day when I was walking in the street there were people like pointing the finger and saying like oh look at the lesbian that was on TV last night you know that was like the most relieving moment because it's the moment you take away your mask and you are free you know and you are yourself but also that was the moment that I put myself in the forefront and I put my family in the forefront and I knew how hard it would be for them you know living in a very conservative country uh, where you know people uh, don't accept this and people think it's a sickness and how people were gonna make them feel that you know it was their fault that I was like this and that was a hard moment a liberating but, but hard uh, moment as well for many years after that Shani was the only wide open lesbian person in Albania and she did countless appearances in media and she also continued organizing with her queer group for many years we gathered in bars, in parks, in a women's organization would let us their free space to use it for, for discussion groups, for parties and for, for other events. And that in 2011 we opened the first community center, we had our first safe space. And that was very beautiful because finally we had a place we could use to gather, to do activities, to organize the movement and to organize uh, stuff related to the movement. From that moment on we started to grow up. So now Alianza is an organization that is focused on offering us services, service provision where we give psychological counseling, legal counseling, food packages, medication reimbursement, rent reimbursement for, for LGBTI people that are at risk of homelessness, free testing for different STDs, uh, not only in Tirana but also outside of Tirana. And uh, we do a lot of capacity building for groups of professionals because there are many professionals that are uh, not providing, you know, good services and supportive services to uh, LGBTI community like teachers, school psychologists, doctors, journalists, police, that is very important due to high uh, number of hate crimes and domestic violence. A lot of advocacy and lobby with the government. For the moments we have advocated a lot to realize medical protocol for trans people in Albania because one of the biggest challenges is that the trans community cannot access hormone therapy in, in the country. We've been trying to use art as well as a form of activism. Now we organize exhibitions, we, we organize like uh, Queer Got Talent shows, drag queen parties and many, many artistic events as well. So what is the general situation for queer people in Albania today? There is a big contrast in Albania between the legal development and the everyday reality of the community. When it comes to legal development, due to the fact that Albania is a country that is uh, in the process of accession in the EU, the government has been obliged to fulfill some conditions legally, uh, like uh, the approval of an anti-discrimination law that is very progressive law that includes sexual orientation, gender identity, sex characteristics. But when it comes to implementation of legislation, that's where the challenge begins. Uh, because these kind of papers end up mostly as documents that never get to be put into action, you know. Because, as I said, they are mostly done just to have something to justify that, look, we fulfill the condition to enter the European Union. And due to this fact that uh, actually uh, most of things have not been taken seriously by, by the government, the situation has been very challenging for the community. 
Uh, we have a lot of problems with domestic violence that is uh, not prevention and condemned by institutions such as police because this uh, violence is normalized, is uh, justified, uh, sometimes it's not recorded properly and documented as a hate crime. Uh, the perpetrators are never identified in cases of hate crimes, but in cases of domestic violence we have had cases where police have told to people like, go back, it's your father, it's your mother, they love you, like, how can you report your family, you know? And another challenge that the transgender community is mostly facing in Albania is access to hormone ther uh, therapy. And this is especially uh, due to the fact that there is no legislation in Albania that makes it possible for trans people to uh, change their gender mark and their g names in the documents. And also the, the doctors have asked, you know, for legislation because they are afraid to, to, to start this kind of therapies here. That's why for the moment we have lobbied uh, for many time uh, with the Ministry of Health to start and um, realize a medical protocol for trans people. Fortunately, the group started uh, now to work on it. Uh, but uh, till now, many trans people were taking medication in the black market that is very dangerous for their physical and psychological health or were going outside of the country like uh, Macedonia, Turkey, some in Serbia to access uh, this kind of health services. Another problem that we are facing is the fact that uh, there is no legislation that recognizes same-sex couples. And now that many couples, especially of my generation, are having kids and we have two lesbian friends that had two kids, they cannot register the kids as two moms because they are not recognized as a couple. And now they've started a legal battle with the state, but it's going to take many, many years. And the problem is that the kids cannot access many services due to the fact that they are not registered, they don't exist. This has opened for two years now a huge debate, public debate in the country and a debate with institutions in the country because it's very needed, you know, to, to align these laws and to change these laws in order that it protects the LGBTI families and the LGBTI couples and the rights of the kids of these couples. While this push to make these inclusive and positive changes to the legislation has happened, other forces have also grown. There was a lot of disinformation campaigns starting from the media, where it started to dehumanize the LGBTI community, saying that the LGBTI community in Albania wants to erase the term mother and father. They want to replace mother and father with the terms parent one, parent two. This kind of disinformation started to be taken by some anti-LGBTI groups, especially by an evangelic pastor that created this narrative of dehumanizing LGBTI families and saying that these are families that are going to destroy the Albanian traditional family and these are a threat for the community, these are a threat for kids. It created a huge hysteria in the public debate because people are not informed as well, you know. I started to have a lot of death threats, rape threats in this period because, you know, I was seen as a person that was trying to erase this word and was trying to destroy this traditional family. They created this coalition for the traditional family uh, where many public figures joined conservative figures. This kind of narrative um, is a narrative that divides societies, you know, it divides people between, uh, you know, us, the heterosexuals, and them, the homosexuals, like the risky people, the, the, the ones that have the disease and the ones that want to destroy the society. And they are not good because in moments when we, you have this kind of narrative and disinforming campaigns organized against a minority and a vulnerable group, you start to incite violence and you see that the level of hate crimes, the level of hate towards us starts to raise, you know, you have more and more people, you know, talking against 
LGBT rights and uh, seeing you as the demon, you know, the threat in society that is going to take their rights and is going to take their power and their space. This is like becoming a, a tough challenge here as well. It didn't used to exist, this, this kind of... There were people that were not pro, you know, but not so organized and going against us, you know, and well-financed, well-structured. Uh, they have a lot of resources to, to, to go against us. But Shinny has hope for the future. The good thing in Albania and something that inspires me and uh, gives me the aim to live here, you know, and to continue to, to do what I do here, activism, is the fact that the younger generation is much more courageous than we were. <laughs> they come out in a younger age, they accept themselves in a younger age, they learn to love themselves more than us. They have more fr more safe spaces than we have. I see this youth as a factor of change in society, of enriching the movement and empowering the, the, the movement in the country. And that's where, you know, I see the hope. I, I see, uh, you know, the, the, the strength in, in, in the LGBTI youth to really be a factor of change in society. And I think not only for LGBT things, but you know that um, we are not fighting only for our rights. When we fight for a just and equal society, this is a fight that all society is going to profit from. And that's what people have to, to realize, you know. Lastly, she sees a new approach in the community, which she thinks will help move the fight for rights forward. Well, we are having more and more uh, solidarity between causes. Like, we are becoming more solidar with the Roma movement, with feminist movement, with the environment movement. And I think the, the, the key to change and uh, the key to development is going to be intersectionality and it's going to be networking and cooperation between each other as movements to create a united front and, you know, not to be alone in, in, in this fight. And as well, media has to play a very important role in all this. We know that the mainstream media is mostly instrumentalized and is mostly controlled by people in power. So we know that not always the mainstream media is with us. But you know, there are a lot of other ways now, like having your own YouTube channel and using your TikTok and using your own mediums to bring your stories and your voice out there. So being creative is very important and I think the young generation has, you know, the, the drive to be very creative and to be very brave and uh, to be very outspoken. So my, my hope lies there. <laughs>